<sighs> that look cool, sitting like this, you know? Oh, battery's low. Let me fix that first before we get started. Oh, crap, I forgot something else. I forgot to grab my snack. This video is all about apple chips, yo. This is fruit gold. Hey Sloby Nation, welcome back to my video. Today we are going to be talking about apple chips and how I've been on a apple chips making frenzy. If you guys haven't seen my other unboxing video, I did an unboxing of the Excalibur. But honestly though, you guys, I have been digging my apple chips. I mean, seriously. I usually go through about 10 to 15 apples a week making apple chips. I make giant batches of them so that I can give to friends, family, and roommates. So today we are going to be talking about how to make apple chips in three different formats, the dehydrator, the oven, and also the mag, the mag, the microwave. There's a recipe that I use specifically. I'm going to list it in the description box also while I'm talking through this video. Okay, so here we go. What you're gonna need is you are obviously going to need some apples. I like to use about 10 to 15 apples depending on the size. With a Excalibur with nine trays, you can be done with about 10 to 15 apples. The ones that I got are just red delicious just because it's on sale. It was 32 cents a pound. I mean, why the heck not? So what I do with the apples is obviously I wash them and then I dry each single one of them. So the next thing I do is I set up my mandolin. I love my mandolin. I got it off of Amazon for like $12. Um, I really like it because it comes with a box. That means when you are slicing and dicing, it catches in the box. The great thing about this mandolin is that you can change out the blade. So you can use it to rice things, julienne things, or I don't know what else you would do. Uh, you can also, you can also adjust the dial so that it could be as thick or as thin as you want. And I like to keep it at around two to three. That's the number. That's kind of like the magic number for me. Five is too thick, one is too thin. So what I do is after two or three apples, I take all the slices out and I put it in a bath of lemon water. So this is about six to eight cups of water and half a lemon juice juiced into the bath. So about one minute after the bath, I'm gonna take it out of the bath. And what I like to do is I like to place down the apples on a towel or a paper towel and just dab the excess water off. Or you can just put it into like a colander and just let it drain as much as possible, whichever is easiest for you. Now what I do next is I like to season my apples. For me, my favorite seasoning is just cinnamon sugar. You can use, I don't know, pepper, salt, or whatever you feel like. But cinnamon sugar and apples is like bomb. It's like peanut butter and jelly. It's like like soy sauce on the wonton. You know, I need to find my peanut butter in life. Why do I have to be jelly? Because I'm doing this in such a large batch, you're gonna see that I'm using a shit ton of sugar and a ton of cinnamon. I'm gonna break it down so that it's in the smaller servings for you guys down in the description box. All I do is I just pour sugar into a bowl and then I pour some cinnamon into the bowl and I mix it around with the spoon. Best way to see it is that you want a tinge of brown on your sugar, but you don't want it to be too brown, otherwise it ends up tasting too cinnamony or spicy. <laughs> So once that's done, what I like to do is I like to place a couple of the apple slices into another bowl and then I sprinkle some of the cinnamon sugar on top. I lay down more apples, sprinkle more apples, sprinkle. And the reason why I do this is because I wanna make sure that all the apples kinda get a little bit of cinnamon sugar. I know people like to just throw all the slices in and then top it off with the cinnamon sugar and then just mix it up. That's fine, you can do that too. I just, I'm just more methodical about it. It just goes to show that I am uptight. So after you're done with that, you're gonna take it and then you're gonna lay it onto your dehydrator trays. You know, there's really no method on how to do this. You can lay them side by side, give them some space. Um, you can overlap them on top. I like to just overlap them on top and I crank that dehydrator up and I let it go for about six hours. I really don't mind. It's gonna go in my mouth, out my butt anyways. And by overlapping it a little bit, you can fit more apples onto a tray. Like I said, I stick it into my dehydrator. I crank that baby up to 165 and then I let it go for about five to six hours. Sometimes Sometimes it could be a little bit quicker depending on how thick or thin your slices are, but I think six hours is sufficient. Okay, so next thing, let's do it with the oven. Do all the same prep work. You do the slicing, the dicing, the lemon, the cinnamon. There's a couple ways to do this. You can pop it right onto your baking tray or you can obviously put a piece of parchment paper down, which I highly suggest, and then put it onto a baking tray. Now you're gonna bake this baby for about 15 minutes, anywhere from 200 to 250 degrees. 
So once you look at your oven and you notice that the edges are kind of just curling up a little bit, you'll take it out and you'll flip it over to the other side. And then you're gonna bake it for another 15 minutes. So when it's done baking, you're gonna take it out of the oven, take it off of the tray and place it onto a cooling rack. And while it cools up, even with the dehydrator, it ends up getting crispier. So you gotta give it some time to rest. Last and not least, probably my most unfavorite method. And just because, I don't know, I don't think eating microwaved chips is all that healthy. If you are in a pinch and you don't wanna pay $6 for a bag of apple chips, I totally understand. All you gotta do is the same prep method, slice, dice, lemon, cinnamon. You take your babies and you put them onto a plate that is lined with parchment paper. Now the biggest tip here, and it depends on which microwave you have, if you can change the power onto your microwave, try to set it at a lower power. Mine goes up to 100. I don't know what that means. I really don't care. Should I look it up? I probably should. Hold on. One. So if you can change the power setting on your microwave, that's fantastic. The reason why is because the stronger your microwave is, the higher the chance of your apple burning without actually drying. So it's gonna end up working very similarly to a dehydrator. Stick it in there at about 10 to 20 megahertz and you microwave that baby for a good two to three minutes until you see the edges kind of just crisp up. And again, it depends on your microwave. So the first few times you do it, please keep an eye on it. Okay, so once you notice that the edge are crisping up a little bit, you would want to take it out of the microwave and flip it over, stick it in the microwave again, and let it go for another few minutes. You have to keep an eye on it because it is a microwave, your apples can burn. You're gonna take it out, pop it onto a cooling rack, and once it cools down and settles, it'll be nice and crispy. The one thing I do notice about the microwaved apple chips is that they do shrivel up a lot more. However, what I do notice is that the apple chips in the microwaves do not get as brown as, let's say, it being in a dehydrator. Just because when it's in the microwave, the rate of it dehydrating is a lot faster, so it doesn't really get exposed to oxygen to oxidize itself. Oh my gosh, you know what would be awesome? If my eyebrows, like, every single morning oxidizes itself and it, like, browns on its own, that is like your body willing your brows draw itself on. And that is it. That is how you make apple chips using a dehydrator, an oven, and a microwave. I still personally love using my dehydrator. I ate all the oven ones. I ate all the microwave ones. I don't know about the microwave one. There's just something about it coming out of the microwave that kind of freaks me out a little bit. I'm probably just being a snob about it, you know? Another quick thing is that when you store all of your apple chips, make sure you store it in a very airtight container or a Ziploc bag. Another thing I like to do, and I know it's a little bit controversial, especially with Momsy because she thinks everything gives you cancer these days, is the these dry silica gel packets, the stuff that you see in beef jerkies or other dried fruits. What you do is you just stick one of these bad boy into your airtight container and what it does is that it soaks up any moisture that does get into the container and it doesn't affect your apple chips, making them last even longer. So yep, I just made a giant batch of apple chips because currently this video is going live but I might be not alive in Big Bend, Texas somewhere. I'm actually going camping so you guys gotta wish me luck on that. Yeah, if you're gonna try out any of these methods, be sure to shoot me a photo of your apple chips using the hashtag HeyKLSLOABN to any one of my social medias. I'm very active on Facebook. Currently, also very active on Instagram. I'm using Instagram stories like Cray. Um, but yeah, if you like this video, be sure to like it down below. Um, leave me a comment down below on what you want to see next on my channel because I'm trying to be more consistent with uploading, you know? I don't know why I'm staring over there. When I talk, I just stare into the abyss before I turn back, you know? And do me a huge solid by clicking subscribe if you want, you can hit the notification bell so that it tells you, hey, KL just uploaded. But if you don't want all that noise, I totally understand. I turn off push notifications like crazy as well. But y'all know how to end my videos. Oh my gosh, my hair is being such bizarro land today, but today we're talking about my lashes. I have my lash clusters here. So what you do is you will take your lash clusters and you will hold it with a pair of tweezers. You just dip it into the well of glue and you pick it right up. Once you dip it into the